really understand that a, a, a craft or a craftsman like that doesn't come along often. People don't even realize it. Not just as a writer, but as a vocalist as well. The two don't come together. You got Luther Vandross and people like that. But, you know, how long do they, do they, do they come? So, do you have any ideas for that? What do you think? Yeah, I would love to. I think what, what should happen is just getting together a couple of people like Newell, people like Andre Morel, people like his manager, Jeff Christie, people like Eddie F., you know, who he and I partnered together for that project. Um, I would love to get them together and just converse about what to do and do something with ASCAP because he was an ASCAP songwriter of the year. So do something with we're not just like something to give them a quick tribute, but something that's going to be ongoing. Yeah. Like the Kenny Green Songwriting Award, something along those lines. Yeah, something like that would be great. Um, you also um, executively produced uh, another album which is dear to me. Um, I kind of mentioned it to you before, Arts and Crafts. Yeah, actually, I did, yeah. And what happened with that? Because song for song, there's not a bad track on there again. It's an incredible song, an incredible group. What happened with that was that it was a sort of transition period. Timmy registered and I were working on the project together. And Timmy was working at the label and then left. So what happens is, it's, you know, it's like your child that you have, with the same thing with intro when I left. You know, you have an album, you make an album, you put it together, and then you birth it. And it's your album, it's your concept, or two people, it's your concept together. If one leaves, it sort of doesn't, you don't have that person to cheerlead the album like you need to. So I think what happened with that is, you know, especially urban music these days, if you don't have a channel, there's somebody behind it, banging it, saying it's incredible, it's time to be, you know, throw a tantrum, it's not going to get anywhere. I think that's what happened. It wasn't enough. If there was enough music, the songwriting ability, but there wasn't enough fire behind the group for people excited about it. So I think the label lost interest. The thing that I found interesting about that project is they did it all themselves, barring I think the one from Alice and Rooney track, which was the White Walk. That's it, and there was one that, that, that was again, Timmy thought that that would be a good idea to do that. I, you know, again, incredible writers, incredible, and they were very much like intro, very cool with intro. Martin Graham was a group that was amazing. You have, set, you, you've done lots of music. Um, Certain things have done well, certain things haven't done well. Why do you feel that certain artists that you, you decided to back didn't, you know, cut the mustard? Oh, well, I think sometimes it's all time. You may do an album in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Or, and you may have a concept for that album that you think is going to work. And you, you relay that concept to the artist. And what happens is they, they deliver it and then you put it out. But by the time you put it out, the music landscape has changed. So people, you're doing A, and they're looking for D. So you got an A album, which is great for A, yeah. but the audience is into D, and they're looking for D, D's right now. So I thought uh, the For Sure project right. was quite interesting, uh, produced uh, mostly by Livio Harris, people right. like that. Yep. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of great songs on that. I thought there were some great singles off that, potentially, but that didn't do well at all. Same thing. In fact, my cousin did that album, actually. Oh. What, what I think about artists like that is you start out with something, you start out with a concept, and sometimes they don't deliver it. Or they deliver it sort of, but not really what you need. Yeah. So I think that's how I was fought through the glass as well. How do you feel about uh, VH1, Hip Hop Honors, uh, honoring New Jack Swing in effect? How does that I think that's amazing because they understand real music. And, and that came, that music came directly from the soul, from the heart, from you know people who love to dance, people who love the fun. That came, that's what it's about. And for VH1 to be smart enough to honor it, that's amazing to me. Yeah, amazing. Because New Jack Swing was the 80s one. Yeah. You know, and New, New Jack Swing forever. Absolutely. Forever. Absolutely. Um, is there anything you want to say to your fans on NJS Forever? I would love to. Fans, I got a lot more music in me. There's a lot more things I'm going to do with you. So watch out, listen, and check it out. I found a couple of new things lately that I really love. There's a new girl named Star that I'm excited about. She's not even my artist, but I love her, and I'm going to do something to make her work. But she's hot. And her record's amazing. I played on my radio show tonight. It's a hot record. The crowd was here, and they were rocking too. So be big. You guys would probably have missed this, but uh, we had an incredible New Jack Swing set earlier. Uh, Anthony Knight's on my right, and he's sweating really badly still. And that was about 20 minutes ago. That's because he was dancing so much for half an hour. That was this guy. 
um, doing your DJ thing? I love spinning records. It's what started me in music, and it keeps my finger on the pulse. That's what I love about it. So that's how I'm able to create great albums. So I'm in the club, and if I think an album's gonna work on a dance floor, it's gonna work everywhere. That's the real key. If you can dance to it, it's it right. Now. What do you think about music today? I think music today has gotten a lot weaker because the artistry is not as strong as it was back then. But I think the Kenny Greens will be back. The Kanye, artists like Kanye really make a difference because he's doing real music and he's stretching the boundaries. He's not doing the conventional, I'm going to wear this suit and this outfit and wear this hat and look like he's not doing that. He's taking hip hop to a whole other level. It's much more music. So if music goes in that direction, I love it. And I watch groups like Matchbox 20, what they're doing, and I'm saying, I'm watching, I'm saying, okay, you know, I'm more musical. You know, on the rock side, things are getting more musical. They were a little boring. Kevin Woodley, thank you very much for talking to us. Amen, my pleasure. Much respect to everything you've done. respect to you, and I got more too. Just before we head off, do you want to tell people a little bit more about some of the arts you work with? Because if you just tell people, Okay. You need to know who this guy is, seriously. You need All right, to know. Let's see. Uh, new Kids on the Block, Full Force, Lisa Lisa, the culture. Um, I'm trying to tell you the ones that hit, because not everything hit. Johnny Kemp, uh, Regina Bell, uh, George Michael. Wow, I am lost. I mean, I can't even remember. Intro, of course, LaFerre, Joe LaFerre. Uh, Oh, did you see how quickly he said Levert and Gerald Levert? Like it was just, you know, one of those artists. That's kind of a big yeah, deal. Yeah, the rest of too. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, I did three or four albums with them. I did Gerald Albright. I did, I mean, jazz stuff, R&B, hip-hop, house. But my first signing was a group called Raze. Had a hit record called Break for Love. That was the first record I ever signed. I love that song. Yeah. There's like the French and the Spanish. Yeah, there was, there was four different mixes. Four different languages. Yeah, it was amazing how I just got that record. It basically cost the label nothing. It was a huge international hit. So that was my first signing ever. Was that my the first work at Columbia? I mean, kind of an odd thing on a record, but was that the first record that had. Uh... Not the first ever. There was one way before in the 80s that I think inspired it called Jungle Fever. Okay. You know, which was. I, I, can't, I think the Congas and Crocas. I can't remember. It's like an old school hip hop record. But yeah, it's that kind of vibe. But, you did Rays. Yeah, right. I mean, I there's so many. I know that. I have, I've earned over 70 multi-platinum and platinum albums. Um, I was liaison between Def Jam and Columbia, which means LL Cool J, which means uh, Public Enemy, Slick Rick. I want to know just all the Def Jam stuff. Anything you think of, I was involved. If you didn't know before, now you do. Kevin Woodley, thank you again. America's best kept secret. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.